Hey you guys, welcome back. I want to get into a little bit of a sensitive topic because I know if you are going through this, it is one of the most painful things that you'll ever go through in your life. And that is when someone discards you. When someone discards you and discards you for another person, because let's be honest, if someone's going to literally discard you, which means the breakup is happening completely out of the blue, you had no idea that divorce papers were on the way, it wasn't anything that you guys had discussed whatsoever, then you've been discarded. And being discarded is the ultimate ultimate abandonment it is extremely painful it is very challenging because not only are you dealing with just the aftermath of your relationship ending like that but now chances are you're also dealing with lying and betraying and cheating and another person and now if you're co-parenting and this person's involved and you don't even know who this person is or whatever your situation looks like it, it is not an easy thing to go through and the reason why I'm making this video is because I've been there and I really hope that I I can give you some guidance and some insight coming from the place of having gone through exactly what and have felt exactly what you're feeling right now. Chances are there is a roller coaster of emotion that is happening right now. You, this is definitely not the first video that you've seen. You have Googled, you stayed up late at night watching videos on narcissism, on discards, on the other person, on this, on that person, your ex, on you, and you're learning so much about so many different aspects and. On one hand, it can be very validating and helpful, and on the other hand, it can be very consuming, and you can become very obsessed with wanting to learn everything because it's giving you some sense of relief. It's giving you a little bit of an understanding as to the type of relationship that you are actually in. Now, all of that is educational and logical, and while it does help you to start processing things, it doesn't always help your heart. I have said this for years, I say it in so many videos, and sometimes I just have to repeat myself because there's just no way around this other than just like stating this and making sure that you fully understand this. A discard is actually the ultimate compliment. That means that on some level, it doesn't matter how weak or codependent you thought you were in that relationship, there was something about you, there was some kind of standard that you had, there was something that you expected from this person that they just weren't able to give you, and that's why you got discarded. The only time a discard happens is when that person, you can call them narcissistic, you can call them unhealthy, you can just call them the other person who really cares, is not getting what they want in the relationship. And maybe what they wanted was something that you were not able to provide to them, and that's okay. Don't get offended because you were the person that couldn't give this person what it is that they wanted. That's not a bad thing. So often, especially in the beginning of a discard, and it's normal, we start to blame ourselves. We start to look back and think, why wasn't I more like this? I guess I was too, too much like this. And we start to just nitpick at ourselves. And if you really are honest with yourself, were you asking for too much? Were you, or were you looking for connection? Were you looking for empathy? Were you looking for your best friend? Were you looking for your rock? If you're honest with yourself, there's probably a yes and no to that question. That yes, at times I was a little unhealthy, and yes, at times I was looking for this person to be too much for me because I didn't know how to parent myself, I didn't know how to take care of myself. That's good. When you're honest with yourself, you can actually self-reflect, and this is where you learn from experiences. Whether something works out for the best or doesn't work out, you are always learning. So as long as you're taking something from this relationship, you're golden. And if you're honest and you can say, you know what, I don't think I was asking for too much at times. I think I was looking for this. And you don't want to lose that. That's called your standards. And if anything, your standards are probably should have been a little bit higher because if they were a little bit higher, you probably wouldn't even have tracked to this person to begin with. When we talk about narcissistic personality disorder, more specifically, we're talking about a person who, and you guys know, you've Googled the definition, you've watched the videos, but is very much self-absorbed. They have this level of self-importance they all that matters is what they can get out of the situation. You're dealing with actually a very insecure person, but they can just mask it with this like charming exterior. Maybe they're very sociable, or maybe they're not, but they have something about them that makes them likable to the outside until you actually really get to know this person. Then you start to see really closely that this person's actually not healthy. Now, by the time you really saw that this person is not healthy was when you were already, already emotionally invested 
invested in the relationship. Now it's even harder to leave a relationship because maybe now you're living together. You've been together for years. You started to share a life together. Maybe you got married and you had kids and because you're healthy, you don't just walk away the minute that there's a problem or you maybe sometimes don't walk away at all and that is the problem. And I never say any of these things to make you guys feel better. I'm not here to just like caress your own wounded ego. I'm telling you what the actual facts are. The facts are that a discard is not about you. It's actually about them. You can look at your relationship and say, well, Steph, I really, if I'm honest with myself, I could have done this a little bit better. Great. Definitely get some takeaways from that. But the way you were treated, that had absolutely nothing to do with you. That had to do with that person's actions and their drive to get whatever it is that they wanted in that moment in order for them to feel good. It was about their own needs and their own insecurities. Their insecurities being that they can't form normal relationships. Them discarding you is not a reflection of your self-worth or even your value. It's just a reflection of their inability to form like a healthy connection with another person. Now it's normal to feel like this whirlwind of emotion. One day I'm happy, one day I'm sad. One day I believe you stuff. I'm so incredibly thankful that this happened and it is the ultimate compliment. And other days I can barely get out of bed and I can't believe that this is my life. Unfortunately, that is completely normal for what it is that you're going through because what you just went through was trauma. When something just abruptly happens that you don't have control over and it causes a negative um, consequence or outcoming, that's basically in, in a way traumatic. So when you go through something traumatic, you cannot judge yourself for feeling all over the place. But what I do want to make sure is that you learn how to accept your emotions and process them, but you don't judge yourself for having them and you don't stay in the negative emotions for too long where it starts to dwindle your self-esteem or self-worth. Like you need to remind yourself daily that this had nothing to do with you. This is where when you go through like a difficult time in your life, you learn a lot of like key things that frankly, you don't really ever learn until you go through those experiences. So you don't really ever learn how to grieve until you've experienced loss. That's kind of just like part of it. So you are going to give yourself permission to grieve. And what I want you to keep remembering is that this too shall pass. Like it, this is not going to be the end all be all for your life. This this is not going to dictate the rest of your life if you don't allow it to. Now, if you allow this person to have that kind of control over how you feel about yourself and your life, then yeah, you're gonna get stuck. Yeah, this person's gonna win. Yeah, you're never gonna be able to get over the situation. Yep, you're gonna end up angry and bitter forever and ever. I want you to understand that this had nothing to do with you. I want you to understand the type of creature that you were dealing with and the insecurity that they actually have. I want you to also be able to start cultivating your self-worth by reminding yourself and your self-esteem by reminding yourself that you didn't deserve any of this, that none of this had to do with you not being a good partner, you not being more attractive or not giving this person what it is that they needed you didn't want to give them what they needed you were not a doormat you did not want to always conform and that's why they moved on you have to always be reminding yourself of who you are I had to constantly remind myself that I was a good person I had to come from both like the nurturing side and I also had to give myself a little bit of motivation and tough love the nurturing side was that I was a good person I had to always be reminding myself of that that I didn't deserve this I had to allow myself to feel what I needed to feel and give myself that validation without any shame or judgment. I also had to remind myself, quite frankly, that I'm a badass. Like, no, this is not okay. And I think you need a balance of those two things. You have to be able to say, I'm a good person. I didn't deserve this. And you're not healthy. This isn't okay. <laughs> this isn't normal behavior for a relationship. And you also have to remind yourself of who you are and that you're very strong and that you're capable and that this is a challenge in your life that you're going through. And maybe you didn't ask for it, but you will gain huge amounts of insight from having gone through this. And for me, that was the ultimate goal is that I didn't ever want to have to go through a really painful time in my life and not come out the other side being a different person, being a healthy person, learning something from this experience, learning something about people, learning about something about myself. So when you want to sit there and think about all the things that you did wrong in the relationship and how you weren't this and how you weren't that, you can be honest with yourself and say, look, if I'm really honest, I could have done some things a little bit better in that relationship. Great. 
Those are the things that you get to work on for your next relationship. And all the things that you know I put up with and I shouldn't have put up with, put up with, these are the opportunities for you to rise up and really start owning it. This is where you actually get to start again. That's a huge gift. Don't look at it like, oh, well, great, I'm on my second or third divorce, or oh, great, I'm going through a divorce, or oh, great, what is everyone going to think? No one cares. This is your life. This is about your happiness, and you have an opportunity right now to actually get better, to get more than what you had before, because what you had before, you probably would have settled and stayed and dealt with had this not had happened to you. I know that was the case for me. I probably would have stayed. I would have overlooked the cheating, and maybe not overlooked it, but... I definitely would have worked through it because I don't want to just throw in the towel because a mistake happened or someone's trying to whatever, work through their own stuff. I'm very understanding and I'm very loyal, but I didn't want to be loyal to a fault anymore. And I didn't want someone to be taken advantage of me. So I looked at it like as much as I didn't ask for this, Sometimes that's the blessing. Look, I know that this is a challenging time. I know that there are moments when you watch videos like this and you feel like hopeful and inspired and you're like, you're right, Steph, and I'm gonna listen to this over and over again. And I'm telling you, you have to. You have to listen to these messages over and over again because at any point during the day, it's very easy for your mind, for your wounds, for your insecurities to take over, drag you down a rabbit hole, and make you feel nervous for the future. And we are not here to be nervous for the future. We are not here to let this situation completely ruin our life and make us bitter and make us angry. No, we're actually going to get better. So that is the goal is to get better from the situation, get better within ourselves and create a better life than we even thought we wanted like I can't even tell you the life that I have right now and look nothing is perfect so I don't want to like create this facade of like oh my god once you rebuild and you heal finally you're gonna get everything like look you're still human and you're gonna go through a human experience so you're gonna have challenges still you're still gonna have fears and all of those things but you're learning how to actually deal with life and not just suppress how you feel, not just ignore, not just let life kind of do whatever it wants to do. No, you're learning how to be a creator. You're learning how to take care of yourself mentally and emotionally. And because you know those things, you will always be able to get back to that Zen place. You will always be able to actually find peace and happiness because you start to slow down and you really learn valuable lessons that you never learned before and this person will never learn those lessons because they're too insecure they're too wounded they're too surface level they can never go deep with a person so don't also play the game of like oh look they're sailing off into the sunset and they're happy and i'm over here struggling it doesn't matter if they're with the same person for 50 years or if they get divorced tomorrow it doesn't matter if they get divorced tomorrow they break up tomorrow yeah you'll have one moment where you go haha you know but that's really just your ego talking let's just be honest with each other and then guess what you're going to move on with your day it's not going to give you the satisfaction that you think it's going to give you and if this person is with with the person that they discarded you for for the rest of their life that stinks that stinks for that person that means that that person has absolutely no idea the type of relationship that they're in you just need to move on with your life and create the life that you want the relationship that i have right now the life that i have right now the peace that i have right now the even when i am going through a difficult time just the fact that i know how to take care of myself now on a level that i didn't before i would take all of these things I, first off, I would have never foreseen that this would be my life. And, and I think sometimes that's the blessing. That's the blessing of things not working out is that you end up, I don't believe for a second that if a door closes, that something better is not waiting for you. I just don't believe that. So as long as you keep trucking along, you will get better. If you decide that this door was the door and you're the victim and all of those things, then you're not gonna get better because you're not looking for better. And this video and this channel and what I do and everything on social media that I put out there is about making sure that you understand that the way life works is that there's a better door. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope it gave you the insight, the motivation, the guidance. Please watch it over and over again. If you need me at two in the morning, just <laughs> find me on YouTube and hit this video. So I hope you guys are well. I'll see you in next week's video. Bye.